the three month supported job search phase, we look for um, everyone to be employed in a global level QI job. So Quantum, right now we're focused on AI and Web3. Um, and our employment rates at, at the nine month point are, are at about 80%. So it's a lot of work. We're looking for work ethic to be admitted. It's a lot of work to stay in the program. But if you follow the system, we've found that it's been successful. And that will take us to here where people get their first global level job in the AI or Web3 fields. And we're currently proposing and looking for partners to build a, an ever stronger alumni network to try and um, get people to move from their first job to move into a managerial sort of role. But for now, I want to focus on this transition from where you are right now, a high potential young person to your first job and with three months of training and then a three month supported job search phase. Um, that's that's the that's what you're applying for right now. Um, I just wanted to highlight two stories of two of our alumni. One is Ababao from Ethiopia and the second is Ada from Kenya. And Ababao is from our second batch of training and Ada from our third. Um, but they both very quickly moved from their initial um, first job into becoming a team leader or a manager for their companies. And in Ababao's case, the company that he was working for headquartered in London, they transitioned their entire company from a software led or a design led company into an AI led company. And they've ended up hiring, I believe about 12 of our, our graduates. And so their entire AI team is based out of Africa. And that was um, on the back of much of the work that Ababao did. And Ada, in a similar way, um, went to work for a company working remotely based in Berkeley in California. And um, she, her manager described her as fearless. So she would go into a program. She came from Mombasa, go into, take up the projects that everyone else was maybe a little bit hesitant to do. Uh, most of her colleagues had uh, masters or PhDs from the US. She was the only person from Africa on the team, but was so successful that they ended up hiring two more people. And so these are the two examples of stories where by identifying people, by streaming them, getting them ready for their first jobs, we found that uh, the types of graduates that we have, they grow very quickly in the workforce. And that's what we're here to talk about in a little bit more detail. Um, and so our model is uh, this uh, fresh university graduate, and we're going to be focusing on the intensive training part. Um, and I think I have a slide which talks about uh, exactly what happens during the training um, where we have every week is a different challenge. Um, so graduates come into the training, they're given a challenge which mimics what happens in the area of business. And those have been carefully designed so that when you finish, you have the level of experience that you can speak to an employer and say, I did a project on natural language processing, or I set up this data engineering track or a data engineering um, stack, which is similar to what I would face in a real job in the field of data engineering. Or I actually developed a NFT, a non-fungible token, which is similar to what you would see in the Web3 field. We overlay that with guest talks. We have uh, six contact hours every day. Mary is uh, our community manager for Batch 5. And so we have tutors who are always online. Anastasia is a tutor. Mary is our community manager. We have community activities. And our goal is that people are not learning by themselves, but people, the whole cohort is learning together. And those are supported by external experts, by challenges which are designed to match um, what industry is expecting. And we have the technical and the career side of work so that people, your CV, your cover letter, interview skills, um, one has all of that so that at the time of graduation, um, you have all of the skills that employers are looking for so that you can quite easily make that transition. And I don't know how we are in terms of time, but I didn't want to say too much more other than we're invested in your success in that um, the cost of the actual training for batch six is being paid for by the batch five graduates. And the model works when people actually get placed into work. And so that's why we have what's called a pay it forward model where our sustainability is is only guaranteed um, when graduates match into work. And we have that confidence that people will match into work. And that's why um, there is no application fee and there's nothing to pay for until the end of the fourth week of the training program, at which point we ask for a hundred dollar deposit. But the re remainder of the training fee, the last $900 is only payable once you get a good job. And if you don't get a good job, uh, then you don't need to pay. But we're confident that, that, uh, that people do get jobs 
we've seen that we've developed these systems um, and so we're confident in our ability to do that. So I don't have much more to say. I'd rather spend more time on the Q&A, but I'm sure Yabba Bell has a few things to add um, at this point. I mean, I, I think, you know, you have covered everything and let's just jump in maybe to the Q&A and then if there are any further things that I need some explanation, I would jump on there. All right. Thank you very much, Arun, for uh, for that. Before we kind of jump into the, uh, the the actual big meat of the day, which is the Q and A, I think we'd like to hear a little bit more about um, what does a training look like. So, what is exactly that is done? Uh, just briefly, I, I think uh, we've got an, an overview on how everything works. And, and what the pay forward situation means and what uh, Ten Academy is all about. So I would like to invite um, Anastasia uh, to, to kind of run us through what does a you know, training session look like? So a cohort, what does it look like? And probably Yababa will be free to, to, to also jump in as a tutor as well uh, to kind of add to any of that. So you've got five minutes to, to do that or so. Thank you, Mary, for that. So it will be more of a continuation from what uh, Aaron has mentioned. Uh, so Aaron just said that we do our training mainly based on projects. So that means every week will be a new project, but some weeks we'll find that uh, an extensive project can cover two weeks. So each week, which uh, we have a new project, that's a new concept, concept uh, in the three career tracks that we do, that is uh, machine learning, uh, data engineering, and um, Web3. So every week, a new project, a new concept, uh, every day we do have stand-ups. In stand-ups, what we do is just say, what, what, where are you? What do you plan to do? In short, it's just like an update of uh, what you're doing uh, for the stand-up. So our day starts with the stand-up. We also have two tutorials per day. And since you've had it's a new project, a new concept, so the tutorials are basically around the concepts which will be used uh, for that project. Then uh, in addition to that, we also have the CBS, which uh, Mary is here. You'll actually get to interact with Mary for the CBS sessions. And uh, I think I also, we also have a career tutorial. Sorry for that. I didn't uh, mention that, but uh, in every, every day, we also have a form of career, career sessions. So I don't know if there's uh, anything I'm missing, but uh, I think uh, that's the basic structure for the training. Over to you, Mary. Thank you, thank you, Anastasia. So I, I think it's more clear. It's it's more like an intense training, a six day, so basically Monday to Saturday kind of situation with what Anastasia has explained on a daily basis. So for you to be able to be successful in this program, you have to commit all the time. It is a full time kind of um, uh, engagement and commitment, and of course. A lot of uh, a lot of hard work and a lot of um, technical uh, challenges are also involved. But also, it's uh, we are not very static. So as, as as Anastasia was mentioning, we also have activities that helps us to bond and to know each other more. Especially because the program is uh, virtual, and you know the limitation with it being virtual is that uh, lack or limited. Uh, uh, human touch into it. So what we do, we have uh, community building sessions, uh, which happen every day where we, we you know, um, trainees get to engage with one another, get to do different fun challenges to kind of relieve them of the technical, a lot of technical um, work stress and also just to get them off the laptop for a bit because everything happens on the laptop for them. Yeah, and, and we, uh, we also have um, another session um, that happens in the morning, kind of a recap, trying to find, it's a very human-centered methodology. So every morning, um, we have to gather and kind of catch up with one another and, and with, uh, with the tutors and everybody to try and understand how is it going on your, uh, on your end? How is the challenge going? Are you facing any, any challenges with completing your tasks? then you're able to, to even share with your, your colleagues 
uh, what uh, what you've been up to and what you're struggling with and some of your colleagues can be can be able to help you so that is it's more it's a very human centered approach and it's it, it's an approach that really depends on you your efforts basically what you reap is what you sow that's uh, uh, what they like calling the effort you put in it's exactly what you um, uh, what the return you get so I think that's more like it when it comes to the uh, the structure of the training itself and of course the reason why we invited uh, Daisy today Daisy as I mentioned she completed her um, she's she's about I would say she's still doing her, her, her week weeks challenge until tomorrow um but she's technically getting done and ready for graduation and very excited for it so she, she i would like to call her to kind of just share with us in, in, a, in a very um uh, very open note how the experience was what were the challenges she faced and how she managed and what she's gained out of the entire experience then after her we'll open up the floor for for q and a's until we respond to every single question hopefully we do that. So Daisy, are you ready? Um, yes, maybe. Thank you. Over to you. <laughs> Thank you. So good evening, everyone, once again. Um, I'm really excited to be here, and I also just wanted to commend each and every one of you for taking this step in like taking charge of your careers and applying for this opportunity, as it's very really life-changing. And I pray that all of you actually get accepted into the program. So um, the intensive you see on the pamphlet means it and more. It's very intensive and rigorous, but with the right mindset, it's actually um, very doable. Um, uh, for me, first we had week zero, which was basically the first stage where uh, you're exposed to a general challenge and your abilities are assessed as to whether you're fit enough for the program. And... Uh, it was quite hard to be honest. I had to do a lot of consulting, a lot of asking and there because yes, I may have written Python code while in uni, but there's a lot more that's required of you in terms of the PEP standard and uh, the standard of code that's supposed to be written. Um, that's quite of a general overview. And uh, really, as a female trainee, one of the challenges I faced was maybe say when it comes to group work. It's really important for you as a female trainee to take charge and stand your ground when you're put into a group um, with maybe say more more guys because um, I find most, I found myself in a situa situation where um, my male colleagues were more ready to take up on the challenge and they were almost halfway done through with the challenge without maybe say consulting us just with, a, with the assumption that the ladies are not going to get much work done um, then I think it is a bias, yeah? So you really have to be aware of such biases and address them early. Be able to just stand your ground and say, okay, so it's a group project. I would actually want to be able to do this and this and this. And if you find that you're not able to do it, consult. Um, and it's important also for you to just communicate. Um, if you find yourself in such a situation, for example, or several others that could come up, always communicate to the cohort manager, always communicate to Meiji or Anastasia or Aaron, someone you can easily open up to with regards to your struggle because um, I want to believe that you're investing your time and your money into this um, program and you would want to get the most value out of it. So that is uh, with regards to group work. You can easily sit in a group and not do much because somehow the work is going to get done and you'll just, you know, like you'll add your name there, you'll get the marks. But if you're being scaled up for a job, really, you, mu you, must, you must be hungry enough to want to get the skills. Um, the other challenge I faced was when it came to comparing myself. I remember the first few weeks I used to hate stand-up because we'd get, um, we'd get on a stand-up and uh, the challenge has just been presented to you and you find that there are people who are, who've actually been able to... Um, accomplish most of the tasks that were required of you um, and maybe you're still just trying to understand the challenge to understand okay what part fits where and I really struggled with comparing myself um, during the stand-ups and I had like a very wrong mindset towards the stand-up um, but 
um, through through the way Yabebal or Arud or Anastasia would give feedback during the stand-ups, I sort of had to change my mi mindset. So then it becomes a mindset issue. You either decide to do a PC party as a stand-up or you use the stand-up as an opportunity to listen to the kind of progress that people have actually led and uh, reach out to them for help, um, which will really become one of my meta talking points. You have a platform called Slack, um, which is basically where you get to interact with other trainees. Um, that's where all this, most of the CBS sessions happen. So you find that you're stuck with a challenge. Don't let it go past an hour or 30 minutes. Whenever you're stuck, always ping someone. You'll be assigned to a peer mentor um, who really is going to be very instrumental in your growth, in your career. So really, if you can, just reach out to them as soon as possible. Get on a call with someone who's understood the challenge um, and ask them to walk you through it. You'll be surprised by how willing people are to offer help. And uh, um, instead of sitting on a challenge for so long because it can get frustrating, just ask for help whenever possible. And most importantly, for especially women, the lady chain is here for each and every one of you. I would, I would just like to ask each and every one of you to have it as a responsibility to look out for the other um, female chain. You don't let your um, peers flag. There's need to have more women in the space. And the only way to achieve that is if we hold each other's hands and like pull each other in the right direction. So always be willing to offer help when called upon to. And just to tie to that, be very honest with yourself with regards to how far along you are in your journey. How good is your coding? Um, why would you be comparing your day one with someone's year five in the field? So get the nitty gritty. What are your basics? Where are you at in your journey? Be very honest with that and uh, sort of just come up with a roadmap for the same and the things you want to achieve out of Ten Academy and hold yourself accountable to that. For me, what happened, I just like wrote, uh, um, I wrote 10 things I wanted to achieve in the three months I have at Ten Academy and I shared the same with my mentor. So every four weeks we'd look at the, at the list and we ask ourselves, okay, so Daisy, what have you achieved and what have you haven't and how do we move forward? Because otherwise it becomes very hard because the people who are, you know, certainly better than you at the things that they do. And it can really hold you back in terms of like your mental health, trying to compare yourself. Um, and then just three general struggles, your mental health, your eye and your back health. So as I said, it's very intensive. And I, without knowing, ran myself into burnout, um, just trying to get most of the work done and in not, in not the best of ways. So find your triggers if you are really aware of your mental health. If you know you need to take a break, please take it. You, you really won't sit on your machine for 12 hours trying to figure out a bug and hope to um, achieve much. So plan your time. Plan your time so well. You probably just need like two hours, serious focus time, get so much work done, do other things, then come back to your pod just to also take care of your mental health. Um, and for your eye health, I think by week five, my eyes were already tearing um, because I used to spend more than 12 hours on my machine. So I knew I had to invest in blue block glasses. So if you can get those, um, I think they're very affordable. Please do. And uh, get a chair that allows you to take care of your back health because you're still young and you know too soon to start complaining of back problems so um get a good chair uh just to maybe wind up please don't feel discouraged because you because of where you're at in your skill level you'll be very surprised at how far an academy is going to cut about you in like the next three months because I think when I started okay I thought I thought I was at intermediate level but when I really compare I think I was at a beginner level um, and when I look at the things I'm able to do right now I'm immensely proud of myself really even when I know I'm not where I'm supposed to be so just show up for me, the bigger picture that I had in my mind was the fact that, okay, because one of the competencies here at Ten Academy is that they guarantee to help you get jobs. 
So in my head, I told myself, okay, so, so they, for, for the for the sake of time, do you want to take a minute to kind of wrap up? Yes, maybe. Sorry. Um, uh, this was my last statement. Um, the bigger picture for me is that, so the job is a given. So take an academy, take the next few months as your professionary period, where you're really trying to get the right skills for the job and where you're also trying to act accordingly. So practice how to ask questions, practice how to speak during um, uh, Slack sessions, practice how to ask for help now, so that even as you transition, you have all those skills. And then just take responsibility for your learning um, and two quotes, stay hungry, stay foolish. Um, and uh, the last quote is consistency will have talent for breakfast any day so keep at it and all the best thank you so much daisy that was really deep uh, from you and as uh, a few takeaways i got from um you was mainly revolving around the attitude and the mindset have the proper attitude and the mindset to learn to want to learn and in terms of, of for coming from a female perspective it's more like support one another but also be ready to put on work it's not about i am a girl so i can't do this i think we've gone past that and maybe we were even born past that uh, and now it's a time where being female it's not something that should be a limiting factor but it, it should be about um it should be about competence it's not about you being female and the other one being male it's about how good are you at and how quickly can you learn and what is that attitude that you have towards learning anyway thank you so much daisy for that that was powerful and ladies is Ladies and gentlemen, and a few gentlemen that we have on the call, we are going to officially open up the Q&A session. So uh, whoever is, feel free to ask any question. What we say at 10 Academy, there's no question that is very uh, is small or big. For us, we consider every question as important as, um, as the owner does. So feel free to just raise your hand ask whatever it is that was not clear. This is uh, your time to um, uh, to grasp everything that you needed to. Over to you guys, any questions? Can we have maybe people who are, who want should, to ask? Should people type or put their hands up? How do you prefer? So, so you, can put, you can put your hand up. It would be nice to hear from you guys. You've been hearing from all, from us for a while. I feel like I'm in a silo and I, it would be nice to hear from you but if you you're not ready to say anything to speak uh, you can just type that would be also fine that will also be fine so i'm waiting for anybody who wants to volunteer to go first with a question i'm just going to ask a start off question to yababel while people are getting ready so yababel how do you uh choose the challenges that you and the team put together yeah so <clears throat> i think mostly is a lot more based on the job descriptions out there and based on talking to people that has been in the job and based on the experience that i have been also having in the industry what is needed so a lot more is just that you will not i mean i i sometimes consider myself as a guardian that you should not get a challenge just because it's interesting it should just contribute because you have only three months it should co contribute to your portfolio to be able to be picked up by a company somewhere who's willing to pay you so in a way it's really geared and not a single day in your um, three months should be wasted it should contribute to your, towards your you know job readiness so i think all the challenge and everything around it is um, around you know involves around it Thank you so much. As you've heard, it's about relevance, what is relevant at that moment in time. So uh, Nana, I can see your hand up. Do you want to unmute and just ask your question? Nana, yeah. Um, I, I think I'm having trouble with the other name. So feel free to unmute. If you're speaking, you're still muted. There's also a question from Bethlehem on the text. Okay, so yeah, Bethlehem asks, what will happen if I miss a class? 
Hello, I'm Nanaya from Ghana. Oh, Nanaya. Okay, Nanaya, please ask a question. Please, when Aaron made mention of the um, pay as forward, am I right? Yeah, so I would like to know if, um, why do we have to pay us in week four instead of the, um, finishing the entire program? And so we think that after, after week four is a good opportunity for you to get to know what <clears throat> what's on offer. We don't want to, so there's two reasons. One is we want you to be comfortable with the program. And the second is if we don't believe that you will be job ready at the end of the three months, we don't want to make you a promise that we can't fulfill. So after week four, if, if you're not, uh, if we don't think you'll be ready by the end of the three month period, then we will not take a deposit from you. Okay, that kind of answers my second question because I was going to ask if um, job is assured, is 100% job assured after the program? There's no 100%, um, but our job placement rates are right now at 90%. But there still requires a lot of active work and a lot of active learning. Um, some people change their minds. Some people want to go back to school. Um, but we have found that people who follow the system, they do get placed. We, there's no 100% in life. Um, but we, I would say that if you follow the system, we're confident that uh, people will get placed into work. The question is a little bit, the more work you put in, the faster it happens. Okay, thank you very much. All right, Arun, do you want to take the the, the question from Bethel? About maybe Daisy can answer that question. So Daisy, I'm sure you've, Daisy's missed a class or two. So Daisy, maybe you can take that question. Um, uh, yeah, so attendance really contributes to your, your, your score at an academy. So it's important for you to actually make a point of attending the session. However, if you find that you're not able to attend for legitimate reasons, say you don't have power, or you have poor internet connection, just make a point of communicating um, to the cohort managers or the tutors in due time um, to, avoid, to avoid losing out. Yeah, by and also maybe in addition to that, it's always important for us to like, yes, you might have uh, reasons that are beyond your control for you to miss the class, but how do you, how do you plan to catch up with what you missed? It's also important. It also sums up around the, that attitude. It's not, you know, you can't be crucified for losing power, but yeah, we need to know where is your intentionality with regards to uh, what you missed when you were away. So that also counts a lot. Okay, any other question? I, I think Jojo, Jojo had a question. Jojo, Josian. I'd seen your hand up briefly. Okay, so um, I don't know. Um, I'm assuming, I was expecting that it's either, you know, they say when there are not many questions, there are two things involved always. It's either the presentation was too clear to the point that it captured all the, the questions that were in people's mind, or maybe very unclear to the point that people do not know what to ask. So now you have to help us solve that dilemma. Okay, I see two more questions. Um, so from Rediet, from Rediet asks, is, is the class schedule flexible or is it always a fixed time? Maybe, maybe I, I can address that one just as a general, um, because the, so we have the number of tutorials are not that many. So it's not that you are, you have a class. I think we call it just tutorial for, you know, very intentionally. And we call also you not a student, but a trainee. Uh, and even there is a punishment within the team. Uh, sometimes it's not actually uh, enforced, but if you call a student, then you have to tell a joke, you know, because that's that's not the thing. And so in a way that you are a trainee for exactly very intentional reason, it wasn't just a thing. And because you are not being lectured, um, you know, if you are being lectured, it's for knowledge and for your kind of, you know, get, know something. This is not 
this is not we're not teaching we're really preparing you for a job and that basically means it's a lot more of call it a makeup we are we think you are talented so that means the university has given you a certain knowledge that we think and then you have built on top of that based on your i don't know your own personal effort and then you come to us because you probably didn't have the opportunity and the experience uh, you're not living in the us or you're not living in, in other places where you have that opportunity to immediately encounter or the ecosystem or the uh, school system hasn't prepared you for a job even then for them it's also a, a challenge but in africa in general that's even more true so what we are doing is really kind of providing you only a small kind of in the tutorials we're exposing you to a larger idea but we don't even in the tutorial solve something show you like this is how you do it you know we don't the tutorials are not for how to do it it's just like exposing you how an idea embeds in a larger uh, context so that means the tutorials will be mostly twice a week that is on tuesday and, and thursday uh, sometimes wednesdays are there um, and for just practical reasons they are they happen to be uh, one in the after in the morning for one hour one in the in the afternoon for one like for one hour so in general you may have two tutorials per day maximum and that's for two hours so there's no class as you can see the, the majority of if you happen to work for 10 hours you know eight hours you spend it in you know kind of meeting other people kind of for fun activities plus doing and coding and asking a lot more is emphasized about your keeping time your own schedule in the beginning of the week we ask you to plan and we, we ask you just to submit your plan and we create your plan and then we ask you also we grade how you basically delivered on that plan so it's really just preparing for how you do it in an actual company in a team and how you deliver your work and also the way that we evaluate is not like you know we give you like this and then you are whether you answer correctly no it's just like have you done the challenge document has outlined what the business context is you know what the business context needs and then we evaluate it based on the value that you contributed to that business context it's a very similar to like payment to you like in every week basically the score call it how much we are willing to pay for that you know so that's really you know the concept is a lot more in that direction more than in a class where you are graded and the grade means that you are either you know you you fulfilled and stuff it's just that's why it takes a lot of time grading for us and giving you feedback but ultimately it's that one hopefully that addresses a number of questions all right thank you thank you Yababel, for that um explanation i think it's very clear and again as we mentioned it's very human centered it's not about um right or wrong it's mainly about all the work you put into it or the effort or the attitudes and it's very um they're very way designed to to be very relevant at that moment in time so it's it's not per se a class it's uh, it's more um skewed towards your work your the, the hard work you put into it so there's another question here from um uh, from from Senayet, uh, and i apologize if i'm pronouncing it uh, your your name's pretty you know not the best accent but i'll try my best so does joining this q a session mean uh, mean we have joined the program or is there additional steps left to become one of the trainees so basically the question is skewed around what is the recruitment process like so arun do you want to take a, that up absolutely yeah so we have a um our process is designed to uh identify who is fit for this very intensive as daisy said narrow and short form of training um so the it's the q a session it's really open to all applicants um, but it doesn't mean that everyone who's here will be guaranteed to be admitted to the program. Uh, next week, there will be a prerequisite test. It's uh, one hour long. The week after that, that is the week of, I believe, August 7th, there is a one week long assessment, which is uh, 
well, five days long, and every day there's a different challenge to complete. After that, there's an interview phase, and then the training actually starts on the second, the 22nd of August. So this, it is a rather long application process, but that's done purposely, A, to teach, to make sure, give people skills that everyone who's part of even the application process learns something, and B, it's to make sure that there's a good fit. Um, there's a secret, I think. Um, it's not a very well, it's not a real secret, but I think it, it feels like a secret sometimes. Everything that we, every material, every part of the application process that we put out can be solved by almost anyone, by basically any university graduate in Africa. But it takes time and effort. And as Daisy said, it took a mindset shift from sitting by yourself to asking questions, learning, Googling, checking, and not just saying, okay, I don't know the answer. I'm just going to hit submit. But I'm going to ask. I'm going to try and figure it out. I'm going to try and learn. The prerequisite tests that you face uh, will be, it may be challenging for some, it may be easy for some, but there's enough time that anyone who really wants to and uses the full hour can get most of the answers, not all of them, but enough to reach the standard that we're looking for. So we're really just looking for people who are not going to give up and who are going to put the work in and keep learning and not just show up, but really actively learn. And so that's, I would say, I don't know, Mary, um, Daisy, you have about what you think. We're really looking for people who have the mental stamina and the mindset of, am I ready to be an active learner 10 hours a day for um, basically 90 days? It's a big ask. It's difficult. But I think each of you, if you want, has it in you. Yeah, and I, and I want to just continue on that and also answer a few questions down. I think it's really exactly what Arun says. I think if you persist, if you that's why in the beginning I just said, if you really are determined to be here and to make it for a number of reasons, it's because you want the job that really pays well and so you want to change you know, your life or you want to even test yourself like because you really want to be in the field and you know and that doesn't mean that you have to be i think if you are good in already in some things like you know coding it's really great if you are not then if you are really insisting that you can learn and you are a fast learner you can pick it up absolutely you can make it too it's just that we don't really just only pick up the people that are that are just good like just like in any other company they only they pick somebody whose derivative is high by derivative means somebody who's just fast learning and whom convinces us that with enough time that person will be job ready so we know that at, as you come in sometimes you may not have the required skill but if you have done what it takes and we always take those we just look at the derivatives is your is are you the kind of person if you don't make it in the coding are you just compensating it by being there and active and you know asking are you convincing us that you will make it then I think we, we, we take exceptions. So in a way, there isn't one like, okay, here it is and that's all, but it's just that it has, you have to have something that convinces that school. I think, you know, Arun sometimes puts it in this way, hunger plus determination um, and, and basically just the, you know, some kind of discipline or at least wanting to be disciplined because enterprise is really, you know, it's an investment. They just pay you so that they get more money. So if you can be that, then, you know, there are many people who really get taken, even their skill is at a very different level, at a much lower level than their, their peers, but they were so good communicators. They show, they get prepared on time, and then they just get in the interview, you know, well prepared, well kind of, and, and knowing. And then, you know, just the company say, this person has a high derivative. Like, yes, right now they may not be, like that person, but I like this person because I want to invest on something. So, and we also are not, you know, I think for us, it's exactly that. We want you to be picked up easily so that our model is that our promise is fulfilled. So yes, you, if you have certain, I think, uh, if you had been, you know, from a coding background and you really are coding good and you have some experience, it will help you absolutely. But that's not the major, the, the, the only thing. If you are are willing and if you are you know if you have that determination and hunger to really make it for one or another reason you will definitely make it 
Thank you, Ababel Nerun. And I think one thing that uh, one advantage that people who've joined this call will have over those who are not here is the secret behind the recruitment process. You know, many would think that because it's AI related and all this, you need a, like to be a pro. Uh, I mean, then we would not we would not be here at the at the at the very least because we're not necessarily looking for pros. We're looking to turn you into a pro. So all we are looking for through the recruitment process is your attitude, proper attitude to learn. And of course, as Yababa says, hunger and all that. And I think this also answers uh, Fikert's, Fikert's question with regards to do you do the applicants have to, to be perfect in Python SQL starts and algebra to keep up with the training? So I think uh, it's what Yebabel was talking about. Yes, you'll be on the advantageous side. But again, if you have the attitude to pick that up um, as quickly as possible within the training, um, I, I think it shouldn't be uh, the biggest um, setback. I don't know if um, that was accurate, Anastasia or Yebabel? Yeah, that's accurate. I just want to that's accurate. Okay, okay. So I think that one is answered. So there's also one question from Hilda Wambui. Um, hi, I would like to know what what your mode of teaching is. Is it more self-research and inquiries where, uh, where stuck on tasks or is it more guided on the concepts first followed by a task? Uh, Anastasia, are you there? Yes, yes, I'm here. I'll take uh, that question. Mm. Uh, so to answer Hilda, sorry for that. To answer Hilda, most of uh, how the teaching goes, it's sort of said more of self-research and uh, inquiries. When a challenge document is given to you, you'll find that there are a lot of references also added to that challenge document. And you're expected maybe when the challenge document is shared with you first, to go through the references understand what it is about and maybe start just uh, give it a trial then if you have any questions as they say we use slack and uh, we communicate the trainees the tutors the entire team to actually help you understand then where the tutorials come in it would be like maybe we feel like this uh, maybe as a, as trainees or as the entire team we feel like we do need a tutorial on that so yeah will hold tutorials for that. At other points, we'd actually realize maybe this concept you'd better understand when somebody who's in the industry is uh, doing it. So at some point, we also get some of mainly our alumni from other batches who are already working with uh, some of those concepts and they will come in and uh, help give that tutorial. So uh, the main question, the, to answer the main question, it's more self-research, more of your efforts and inquiries, but uh, the tutorials we always have a tutorial in a week, so you want to miss uh, the tutorial, yeah. You're, you're mute, uh, Mary. Oh, sorry, sorry about that. Uh, thank you very much, Anastasia, and hope uh, to Hilda and uh, Fikert. Yeah. Uh, the, the, the answers were clear enough, and if yeah, not- just, I, want, I want to add one, because I think the self risk I think Arun mentioned it. I just want to emphasize it again because that's the most important part. It's a community learning. It's not just only self-learning, which means the Slack, you will see that your queries are answered in less than five minutes and people are willing, either the tutors or other people. So unlike, it's like as if sometimes as if Googling, when you just, when you have something, even vague ideas, maybe you can't find Googling it around it, but when you just put it, people will help you. There will be a trade that's built to just take you through all the kind of like possible way of view, viewing the same thing. So that's something that you will not find easily. And we really pay attention on that because it's a community learning. So it's as a whole, the community will help you to learn a single idea as long as you ask it. So it's up to you. Of course, the self part comes, it has to come from you. You have to query. But then you just put even a big things, people just ask you even to make it what to make it clear. And that basically is another way of learning. Uh, and that's why in three months you can learn much faster than if you were to just learn, let's say, if we were just to give you a course. I think 
Instead, with that approach, probably you might take you a year. And then this one, it will just take you probably a very few times, just because all of the, the angles that you haven't seen, other people would ask. You learn from other people's questions by answering them, by looking at them. You will ask other people, kind of reflect on it. More questions will generate from that. So it's kind of a network of learning. And that really has a much broader way of learning and much broader view than actually if you were. And the same also, there are many occasions, including the stand-up, that you would be asking. So there is so much opportunities where you can ask the tutorials. And, and that allows you to do self-learning, community learning, plus guided learning combined, but a lot more effort. If you are not proactive, you don't learn as much. But if you are proactive, you learn a wells just that you cannot learn normally in another systems, um, I would say sometimes in a year. I think every week is more or less quite a semester, or if not a semester, a term, um, the amount of learning. And I think Daisy can maybe can, can confirm that because that's a statement from my side, but I think the, the scale of learning is that much. Thank you, Yobel, and that's very accurate. I would say uh, some of us have continued to ask why I uh, have this session, and to be exact, is, as Arun mentioned earlier, we, we had experiences of having, yes, female uh, female applicants, you know, go through the process, and and unfortunate enough, we, we find um, a lot of them dropping out throughout the way, uh, because probably um, they went this it's not what they expected to find some it's uh, it's because they feel maybe the workload is high and all that so we set up this session to ensure that you who are, who has applied for batch six you get into it right from the beginning with your expectations right you know what to expect when you get in there so that you're not surprised along the way and again from a very female perspective it's it's a space we've been given and this is uh, this is one thing i like to say especially to african female um uh, females in general is that it, w when you have a space sometimes we complain we do not have a, a space and a platform why not use the platform to the maximum until it drops that's what i, I i'm like okay they're not there, there might not be many opportunities out there, but opportunities like these that that come our way, why not capitalize on them and show that it's, uh, you know, being a female does not come with any, uh, with any limitation to me being uh, the perfect or, or, or a pro in my field as I would like to be. So give an example of Daisy, she's managed to go through it. Why can't everybody else or any any other person do it? So so I, I hope, I know we've come to the, uh, to the end of this Q&A session as I'm seeing no more questions on the chat box and no hands up. But I, again, I would like to, to, to let you know that you have our emails in, in case at any point in time you have another question, just feel free to shoot an email to me or to Arun or Yababel or Daisy, anybody really on the team, and we'll be able to, we'll be, we'll be happy to respond to any questions that we bring on board, but we would love to see uh, you guys put in the hard work and we walk through this journey together to a career that you want to have you as a female, especially in tech. Anyway, um, we are coming to the close and uh, probably there should be a few announcements before we, we close. And one announcement from my end is that now that you understand well what we are all about, we still have uh, about two days to the close of the application. So feel free to reach out to some of your female colleagues or female um, uh, recent graduates in tech that you know from different countries, especially if it's in Egypt, Sudan, we are open to all to entire Africa and uh, uh, encourage them to apply before the deadline. It is a very welcoming space, especially for women in tech. So Arun, I don't know if you have uh, any announcements. Nothing, just nothing more than just to um, amplify what you said. And I think that uh, maybe going one step further, if you know of individuals, uh, women in your networks, who <clears throat> have are already interested in this space and who would really be ready to dedicate uh, three full months to this process, 
then you know instead of just sharing uh, with lots of people, then maybe handpicking a few people could be even more useful because um, yeah we have we we have a lot of confidence based on the results of our alumni that if you put the work in, we're able to get you over this gap of getting your first job in the global level field, and we see that growth. So please do apply. And my request to everyone here is don't <clears throat> don't believe that you're not ready. Um, I think that's one of the challenges we face. A lot of times people look at the first test and they say, "This, I'm sure this is definitely not for me. And I have a 13-year-old daughter and sometimes she's great. She's a great cook and she's convinced that she's a bad cook. And no matter how often we tell her that she's a good cook, she's convinced herself that she's actually not very good. And I, I don't really understand it. Um, but I would like to ask everyone here to really believe that they can do it. Thank you so much. Self-belief is very important and we, we really need it, even not only for the 10 Academy, even just for life as females, we need self-confidence in every step of the way, every step that we make every day, even our own decisions, because you cannot make sound decisions if you're, you're not ready to believe in them. Anyway, that's all from my end. And thank you very much. Thank you very much for joining us. Sorry, we are, we, we've had a spillover of about six minutes. And I know it's a, it's a lot of time, yeah? But thank you very much for being very patient with us. We are looking forward to work uh, with you, to working with you through the uh, recruitment processes. And in case of any question, feel free to, show, uh, to shoot them to us. From our end, uh, it is a good evening and good morning to people who are, <laughs> who are uh, in different time zones and bye bye.